96 I the press conference. No, before the press conference. Before the press conference. Actually, we should have raced in uh, Aida and then we raced in Suzuka. So we ended up doing the last race better. Suzuka, yeah. It was I, I like my Suzuka much because Suzuka doesn't have Schneider corners. No. <laughs> but I will tell you what happened. You know? So we were there on, on, on a demo. So yeah. all manufacturers with the road cars. So I was there with the C36 and Alpha was with what? One six four, one six four or whatever. So the first guy that uh, I arrived there and Nano Nanini said to me, "Huh, Domingo, you know he's from Tuscany, and in Tuscany they don't have the seas. So every time, you come with me. Say, so, okay, I go with you. So I sat next to him, and he was already, you know, the So he goes first out of, of the the pit. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. And we come to the first corner and I say, Nano, do you know the circuit? Never been here before. And then <laughs> it was already totally, you know, sideways because it was the right hander. Yeah. So we did one lap. By the end of this lap, I pulled the end brake. The bloody thing stopped in front of the pits. I jumped out of the car and said, you crazy. No way I'm going to jump on again with you. So I'm sitting in the pits, you know, singing a little bit. We have the press conference afterwards. So Mr. Bernd Schneider comes by and says, Domingos, you want to come for a, for a lap? Yeah, Bernd Schneider. Yeah. I said, OK. So I sit the belt on, go out of the pit. First time through the big straight, you know, the big straight, but it's like 900 meters, something like that. And he goes, and I'm sitting, I'm still, you know, confident, very relaxed, and I'm looking at speed meter to see how quick it goes. And then I see, I see, oh, my breaking point is gone, my breaking point. <laughs> so his breaking point must be arriving now, you know, sure with just did. about time to break. And then I look and I see his right foot. <laughs> Going point. like this, and out of the dashboard come two fingers like this to him, you know, no break at all. And I said, oh, shit. So I looked at my legs to see my legs for the last that time, time. <laughs> in one piece, <laughs> you know. Because, you know, there's the, at the end of the straight, there was this... Uh, this uh, runoff area. Yeah, was it covered there? It was not so bad, but it was not pretty wide. Yeah, but I mean, it was like <laughs> 10 meters. Ah, it was a bit gravel. And the big wall. So I think, hopefully, it puts it sideways so that somehow we stop. We were doing like 160, 170. So it puts the car sideways, and we go, shh sideways to the gravel, hop, first looping. You puff on the roof. As we land on the roof, you know the, the sun glass, the sun roof exploded Loaded. totally. There was all this brown Close. glass paper. Puff. No and helmet. Yeah, of course no, not. No, no, nothing. 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 <laughs> no helmet, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, big boys, you know. Well, it's like Gitan San Filtro, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. usual. So, I bang, big one, and then second one, and I say, oh, Jesus, we're going to land on the wall. And then a second one, a blah, puff, on the wheels. I so, I want to open the door. <laughs> the, the, the wall is already here, so yeah. I can't, can't yeah. open. I look at him, and he starts laughing. I'm just about to kill him. <laughs> and he's, he's laughing at <laughs> Domingos, what, what happened? I said, he can say, Domingos, what happened? I said, you motherfucker, you just rolled the bloody <laughs> car. That's what happened. <laughs> you know, the I bloody know car. I said, oh, OK, are you OK? I said, I'm OK. Are you OK? I'm OK. But I cannot open the bloody door. So get out of the car. So he gets out of the car. I get out of the car. And we walk to the pit. The pits were like. 80 meter away at the end of the street. Bridgestone people were there. So I said, oh, Mr. Piedado, are you okay? I'm still, you know, brown 
full, full of the glass. Full brown hair. from glass from the sunroof, like you know. Looks like Mr. Day. You know? <laughs> this <laughs> day is going to have absolutely absolute 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 like, but then like after today, this... <laughs> actually, nicer today. <laughs> so the Japanese came and said, oh, Mr. Piedad, what happened? I said, the tire went off the rim. <laughs> <laughs> Look and check, and the, right, really. Yeah, you know, of course, after that, yeah, there's no... Yeah. Because there you was no the tire, tire yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not the <laughs> tire problem. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So, okay, I went to the... You know the circuit hotel where the containers, mm -hmm. the 40-foot container was a room. So we had the rooms there, and I go there, and I said, bloody bench. So I changed and go to the press conference. Nanini was in the front. And he was saying, you didn't want to come with me. No, you, <laughs> you know what? And Nanini was very popular because he did win in Suzuka, Suzuka. when uh, Ayrton was disqualified. So 1991, huh? Yeah. So he was big name. So they were sitting in the front, the drivers in the front, and the team managers in the back. So, I don't know, 100 people. I don't know. I said, I have a question now. I said, yes. What do you think about Aida Circuit? I said, well, Aida Circuit is a very good circuit, very uh, difficult, very demanding, um, very safe. But the Bernd Schneider's corner is a little bit dangerous. Ah, Bernd Schneider's corner, so you could see the guys, you know, Bernd Schneider. Okay. Ben Schneider, there was no Ben Schneider's <laughs> corner written on that. Anyway, that was a really embarrassing moment for me. But, but you had another big one. Another, you know, how I came to Rain Sheep. Uh, I did the 24 hour Nurbu thing. I don't know, 90, no, 89, 91? I don't know, 90. And 90, I did it. The fourth, and um, I came first lap at all, free practice, first day. Down to Pride Child. Coming over the bridge, the car came sideways, and I rolled the car. Warm up lap. Yeah. This is what the Sierra? Sierra course was. The rear differential, the horse of the uh, connection from the gearbox came out, and I got oil. It was very slow. Even I rolled the car. You know, and coming into pit lane, explaining why you rolled the car in a warm up lap, it's uh, not so easy. And my manager, Werner Heinz, I was driving for one of the team, and the other team had only rally drivers. And the team owner came to Werner and said, hey, Schneider have to come to set up our car. And he said, yeah, he just set up the car for me. <laughs> 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 he modified a little bit. He just modified. But you know, uh, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about Bacau uh, and what happened there. But the best guy in Macau was Nia Muri. And Nia drove for Opel. In the DTM, yeah, he did. Well, Mark, Mark was uh, was oh, yeah? team manager. Yeah. So, and we have actually that's why we have here. If you if you see, we have these two. Oh my God! I know what you're talking about now. You know, we have these gloves. Yes, here. yes. You know, these are they proper? This, right yeah. and left. Yes. Yeah. yeah right yeah, and left. Okay. So uh, they are proper. They <laughs> yeah. are right and left. You know, they are really yeah. like, uh, right and left. You know, and this is those are real uh, racing gloves from Mr. Schneider, and the feet, if you look, right foot is black, that's <laughs> too much braking, so you... Actually, I'm left foot breaker. Left foot breaking. Yeah, this okay. is breaking. Uh, okay. You, you left foot breaking? Yeah. Oh. yeah, he's a go-kart driver. Mm -hmm. no, he's, he's a lot it's of natural. Uh, uh, Mark, what, what, what happened at the time with uh, the yeah. memory? <clears throat> this so, is, 1995. 1995. Uh, Ni nee was one of the uh, eight Opel drivers in the championship. Um, and the race in Depots, uh, an airfield. So not a permanent track, which has the peculiar aspect of us having to, and the same for all the support races, you had to take your cars from the paddock um, to the pit lane. And the pit lane was located about, I don't know, like a kilometer, yeah. kilometer and a half to the from the paddock. So there was very clear, I don't know, if a, a session, whether it was training, qualifying, about half an hour prior to the start of the session, you had to all gather 
at the big uh, at the gate to the to the track, and then you know with four by fours and everything, all the material, all the cars were being taken to the pit lane. So uh, on race day, same thing. We all gather, we wait, the gate opens, we all move to the pit lane. The cars go into the grid, <clears throat> and on that on that weekend, the peculiar thing was the uh, uh, race engineer of me was not available on that weekend. So I was chosen to be the race engineer. race engineer on that weekend. So Can I was the guy... The disaster. Fuck. Yeah, of course. Um, so I was the guy in, in radio contact with him. So fair enough, you know, the cars are in the grid, we're all ready, you know, the time is ticking down, you know, five minute board and, you know, four minute board and you give the information to the mechanics guys, you've got two minutes, now tire warmers and, you know, give them all. All of a sudden, knee comes on the radio. Maki, Maki, follow knee, tá ouvir? And I'm already, why is he speaking in Portuguese to me? Because the official language for everybody to follow was English, right? Because we had engineers from Germany, from England, from wherever. And, um, and I reply and I said, uh, uh, yes, Ni, I can hear you. Uh, please speak in English. <laughs> and he comes back again. No, no, no. Maki, ven ka tiro carro. So come to the car. You're like, man, it's like four minutes. So I, I jump the wall, run to the car. And, and he opens the door and he looks out and he's sitting there strapped in, everything ready. Balaclava on, no helmet yet. Helmet here, like this, no? Like this, so. And he loves... Oh, Maki. Uh, uh, I say it in, in, in Portuguese, you know, he, he had a little lisp. Yeah? So he goes, Maki, eu só trouxe duas luvas do lado esquerdo. So he brought <laughs> two left hand <laughs> gloves. <laughs> right? So, and I'm standing there, and by now, a four minute sign comes up. You know, I have the team management on the radio. What's happening? What's happening? And I go, this man, <laughs> as a Nothing I can do for you. On any other track, I would maybe run into the garage or go to the truck and find... So I said, dude, there's, there's nothing I can do for you. You have to make do with this. So fair enough. He put one left hand, one glove on. And... Uh, and well, yes. <laughs> this is, yeah, he could have done... <laughs> no, this is okay. yeah, he didn't think of that. <laughs> he didn't think of that. So he did, all he had was on his right hand was one of these cycling gloves, yeah. which you guys so used to wear. Yeah. Exactly. So sure enough, he does the whole race. And the DTM format, as you know at the time, was, was two, two races, races of yes. 100 kilometers with a 20-minute break in right. between. Yeah. Good. So he comes in, and of course his hand is, is completely uh, you know, fried. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's open, and, and he's, he's not in a good place. And uh, so I say, okay, I gotta, you know, can you go and find me gloves? And we, we, we could not go back to the paddock, you know, in those 20 minutes. There was no way. So I looked around, I looked around, and sure enough, behind, you know, all the equipment, there is K.K. Rosberg's... Um, motorhome. Motorhome. Big Winnebago. Private. Private, Private yeah, 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 motorhome. Of course. You remember the, the one that he The used? superstar, you know? He yeah. was the, 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 it was his own team, so he made the rules. So his rule was, I have my own motorhome. mobile, uh, uh, my own uh, motorhome. Good. So sure enough, and it is super hot on that day. It was 40 plus degrees. It was terrible. You remember it was the race that yeah. Michel Bartels collapsed yeah. out of his Alpha in qualifying because we, as we Close all did, we yeah. closed every single hole to have better aerodynamics. So I go, okay, that's my only shot. You know, I try, I try kick it. So I knock on the door. And sure enough, you know, yeah. So I open the door and I look inside and it's Keke sitting there <laughs> with his feet in a bucket of ice water. <laughs> yeah, bucket of ice water. Yeah. Uh, overall, down to here, his personal physio, Peter Kotnik, taking care of him. Some treatments. Um, you know, a, a towel with ice around his neck, sweating like hell, inside the, 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 the motorhome. Outside it was 40 plus, inside it was bah. minus two. Yeah, super <laughs> cold, super, super <laughs> cold, air conditioning today. But the most impressive thing is, he's sitting there smoking in a Cohiba. But, I mean, everything closed, all the doors closed, AC on, sweating, <laughs> massage, and smoking. Okay. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And he goes, what do you want? And I said, well, listen, this is the 
situation, would you have a spare uh, pair of gloves? He goes, for whom? I said, it's uh, for Nia Mourinho. Oh yeah, for me is okay. You know, I believe he would probably not have given me gloves had it been, I don't know, Manuel Reut or, oh, or, or oh, one, no of, the other, think, one oh, of the other, one of the other top no drivers. Way, no way. And sure enough, me then raced the second race with uh, with Kike Rosberg. Yes, gloves. gloves. Nice gloves, eh? Well, wonderful gloves, of course. He had never seen such, you know, <laughs> nice gloves with yeah, sponsors Kike, Kike on the name. Everything and, perfect. Oh, yeah, I mean, yellow, blue. blue. What you remember when when they rocked up to the '96 season? A 95 season, him and Klaus Ludwig as the reigning champion. The motorhome they had and the colors and they had the, the crown stitched into yeah. the carpet, yeah. right? In the bus, it was like, oh, the superstars and those two, you know, the long hair, the shades. I mean, I mean, he, he had the swag, you know, it's, it's it might know be a modern he... one, but he had the swag already then, no, in but those you, days. He, he, he drove 92 for us. Yeah, but you know when we had first test here in Estoril with Keke? I was just about to tell. You know what happened to Keke? The... Keke went into car. I was... I, you know, I was driving for my team and Keke for the Berlin 2000. No, Berlin 2000, yeah. yes. And um, I was testing program, always huge with tire things. And uh, it was same garage. And I was sitting in the car, driving at 9 o'clock, start. You know, we had a whole program. Keke did three laps, jumped out of the car, back behind the garage, smoking. And Gerhard came and said, Keke, you have to stay in the car, we have a big program. Oh no, they have to change springs. Right? No, we don't change springs, you know, we have the program and you have to stay in the car. Next lap I came in, Keke was sitting in the car smoking in the car. <laughs> 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 but you know, it was... <laughs> okay, <laughs> sitting in the car. I mean, second lap, I said, second stop, I came in, Keke was smoking in the car. He know, was the only driver who was allowed to smoke in the car. Yeah. But you know, he, he was world champion 82 in Las Vegas. Mm. It was when uh, Miguel Alboreto won the, the, the race and he became world champion. And I, I had a beard, you know. I could, mm. And uh, Miguel started fourth. And I told him, Michelino, si vinci la gara, mi taglio la barba. You know? If you win shake. the race, I shake. Well, that's good so they start and then somehow with five, six laps to go, he catches up René Arnoux with the Renault. He overtakes Renault and he's leading the race. So every time he goes by the pits, he does this. No. No. So Ken Tyrrell is there and he looks at the people and says, what is he trying to tell us? <laughs> at the time, no, no radio connection. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. Next time again. So finally, you won the race. So they shaved me straight away. Pierre uh, Ginzani and, uh, and Alberto. And, uh, they shaved me completely. So I was like, you know, shaved. It was the first time I could remember of not having a beard. Diana Ross was there. And, uh, Big interview with Keke Rosberg because he was a world champion. Mm. So Keke, now that you are a world champion, so how do you feel? What's going to change for you? Well, I have to tell you, from now on, world champion, I can smoke in Frank Williams' motorhome <laughs> <laughs> because Frank Williams was was yeah. a health freak, freak, you know. Yeah. Remember, but this is. So we came to Portugal for him to, to, the very first time he drove the car was here, before this. Very first time he came here, oh, I have to try the car if I like it or not. So he came here, came with a private flight, you know, private uh, aircraft he had. With Didier Coton, his uh, manager, they landed in Tirs next to, to the airport, came, drove, and then I took him back to the airfield and to the airplane. And somehow I had something that he wanted. So I was carrying something to put inside the, the plane. So, you know, they put the, the, the steps down and I step the first two and they say, Stop it, I say, what happened? Take the shoes off. So, I say, why? 
You don't go with shoes in my plane. I said, I don't go anywhere in your plane. Bloody hell. Take the bloody thing and I go. So the thing is gone. We go to South Africa for the Grand Prix. And uh, after the Grand Prix in South Africa, we should fly back. Saturday, the Grand Prix in South Africa is always on Saturday. So I fly back with Keke because Monday morning, big uh, practice, first practice at the Nürburgring. Because so we arrive there, Keke sits in the car for the first time now, officially by us at Mercedes. And Alan Law is there too. So Keke does five laps. Stops. Next ten laps. Then he stops. He opens the door. <laughs> stops. They open the door. Alan Lur comes in. Say, Kiki, what do you think about the car? What do you think about the engine? And Kiki, very calm as usual, said, Alan, please. With women, I only talk about going to bed, not about the car, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it was... It went on, and then we had the race, first race in Hockenheim, you remember? Where he... Uh, I remember. He had, a, he had the wrong... He, Keke chose the wrong tire. No, he chose. You know, the, the reason was that he took this smaller tires we were talking yesterday. Yes. And I said, Keke, because the, the, the bigger one was better for the race, and Keke took the smaller one front because it was better first for race, qualifying. First race. first race. And then uh, Case asked him, Keke, why you take this tire? The other one will be better for the race. And he said, listen, this other tire has no character. No character. No character. <laughs> <laughs> no character. <laughs> I never will forget it. And then, then he had a big fight with Steve Soper. And with five laps to go, he became slower and slower. And Helen, Helen Law, started catching him. Yeah. And they passed the, the pits going into the last lap. And kick it. Closing the inside, and Helen goes to oh, the she outside. She smoked him around the outside. You remember? Right? Oh, absolutely. And Helen Law went to the outside, overtook him on the outside, yeah. and won the race. Won the race. <clears throat> there was something. And at that time, we had like a 10 or 15 minute break. Mm -hmm. And live, so ZDF was doing the, the, the interviews. Krista Gierke. Krista Gierke, you remember? <laughs> the, she was a Olympic... Uh, uh, star of the German television, la 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 la. She's doing an interview. And she comes out and goes to Keke. I mean, uh, this is a very hard one. So you go to Keke and say, oh, Keke, unbelievable. Now what you're seeing, you know, well and Law was the first time and only time that the female won a race. a race, a DTM race. So you say, what do you think about the Ellen and Law? And Keke, you know, very calm as usual, says, Christa. Now I know why Ellen cannot wear mini skirts. So Christa says, why? Because she's got big balls. You could see the balls from the mini skirt <laughs> live <laughs> on television. You know, the guy, Christa was like, um, uh, well, um, uh, <laughs> back, to was, back to the studio. Back to the studio. Back to the studio. Advertise. That was kicking. And Kike had not won a race by that time. Would that have been his first victory? No, 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 no. He won in Wunstorf. Before that? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I have a very good memory about that race. <coughs> because we talked earlier about the wet disaster at Nürburgring. Yeah. So we were clearly... 91 we started. And we were very competitive. But one thing we didn't realize that not only you need to be quick, but also very consistent, especially in DTM, and I think from my point of view, the DTM was, tech the ITC or DTM, yes. so technically the best class, especially for tire development, I worked in, mm -hmm. so most difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the uh, cars were very high tech and, and beautiful, and much more with the uh, weight distribution changing, mm -hmm. radiators covering, all sorts oh, yeah, of things, ABS, yes, 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 yes. so, so uh, okay. But anyway, so 91, we fin uh, finally we finished second in the championship behind the Audi. 
So 92, testing went very well and we were clearly AMG, Mercedes, Bridgestone favorites. So first race in Zolder didn't go too well because of one mistake by me and one mistake well, by... Well, you had to do the, the rescue uh, race. You yeah, remember and, on and, Saturday and one mistake by the team when they didn't put enough fuel in the cars. I think you were leading uh, and then the tire degraded very much. Mm. Anyway, we didn't win. So then next race is the, 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 the wet disaster. Yeah. So the pressure is on. Yeah. So then we go to Wundsdorf. Okay, so then in qualifying, I have an argument with KK. Normal. No, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> because Arguments with we want to be quick, but he wasted a set of qualifying tires because he said, okay, now we put the qualifying tire on. And I said, sorry, KK, it was too late because wounds were quite long. Too late, you cannot make it. Yeah, we can. So, no, no, no. So I'm angry, but he goes out, and I was right. So when he comes past, flags on no lap. Okay. So then later we have a discussion about this, and I said, look, you wasted tires, so I am not going to give you any tire. You, you use your used tires from Saturday in the warm up, because I don't want to waste one more set with you. So, and I don't know if he got the message or not, but anyway, maybe he thought, okay, he is angry, but tomorrow he forgets. Yeah, yeah. So, this is the warm up. He comes in, so first you start on the used tires. He comes in, goes to his engineer, or speaks to his engineer, put the new tires on. Sorry, we don't have any. Why not? I said, well, because Bridgestone said, or he said yesterday, we don't get any more tires. So, he comes out of the car, looks, goes to him, where is he? So it was immediately clear who I was he. I knew what he wanted, you know. <laughs> and I was standing near the guardrail, yeah. and he pointed out, <laughs> there. there. So KK comes to me, start to shout, grab me here. <laughs> <laughs> so I say to him, okay, please take your helmet off. Yeah, to have an even playing yeah. field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. it calmed down, and... Um, Finally, he won the race. So, fantastic maneuver how he passed uh, Jörg van Ommen. Yes, on the outside, in, in, yeah. In the mm. Fantastic, and we won the race. So, after the race, I went to him, I said, Kike, look, I think next race we have an argument again, because this is more yeah, is. <laughs> But ever since, I, we have been very good friends. So, yeah. so yeah. He's, also he's, he's a character. Kike is fantastic. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Good guy. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt, yeah. But I cannot, I cannot understand why a guy with such a character is the father of a guy who is so well educated, so straight, nothing goes wrong. He has a beautiful uh, uh, wife and a nice child and no tattoos, no nothing. I mean, huh, Pedro? Uh, what? Oh, no, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's unbelievable, you know, isn't it? Yeah, I, I like uh, Keke a lot. You, did, you drive with, uh, did you drive with him at Peugeot? With KK? No, I race no, against no, him. I race in his team, DTM. Yeah? No, I race against KK when he was racing the Peugeot. I was with Porsche. Just. Yes. And KK did the Peugeot well at that time. It was the first time I met him. But you know when it, where, where it was? Team manager was Jean Thot. And Peugeot. Peugeot. Yeah. 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 And I went to Le Mans. And then KK, you know, KK. I don't think that KK ever has put his hands in an engine or change the tires or whatever, you know? Make it dirty. No dirty ends, no way. So they are in Le Mans. It's like three o'clock, no, it's later. It's like uh, 10 o'clock in the morning of Sunday. And he goes and So he stops on the straight. So he goes on the radio and says, Jean, the car is broken. Can you change my slot for my flight to Montpellier? <laughs> <laughs> Jean went berserk, you know. Because he said, the car is broken, change my slot. Right. Oh, Keke was just... No, those were great times. All, all the guys that were in the field at the time, yeah. you know, whether it is a Keke or a, a Nanini, uh, you know, but you fantastic had, names. But, but you know that Pedro, when he was driving, uh, I remember F3000 in Spa. 
that was the, actually the day before the accident of Alex Zanardi. And Ayutan was uh, in the motorhome, in the McLaren motorhome, um, on the post-qualifying um, briefing. And then he said, um, let me know how the little one is doing. I said, okay. So Pedro started and was a big fight with David Coulthard and Gilles de Ferrand and uh, I can't remember, Panis and all these guys. And actually, when he was like, I don't know, second, I knock on the door, <laughs> the big meeting of McLaren. And I said, I turn, he's second, okay, go. Oops. So I closed the door, went <laughs> back to the pits. So he then gets first, into first, first place. So I run to the motor room again, knock on the door, oh, He's first. Okay, okay. Keep going. <laughs> you won. <laughs> I opened the door and then he said, he won the race. And then, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 Ron Dennis says to me, he goes, get out. And then, I'm, uh, you know, Ayrton, it was 93. That was the year of mm. where he had, you know, he had. Uh, it was on a race by race sort of contract. Yeah, correct. Yes. Yes. But I, tell you the story, I tell you the story in, in Imola, the, the year before he then got killed. And then he says to, to Ron, Ron, I asked Domingos to do this. Don't interfere. I said, oh, Jesus. But in 93, he was on a one to one, uh, 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 on a one to one race. And he got $1 million per, per race. race. Yeah. And the money had to be in Brazil on his account on Wednesday. So he could fly Wednesday evening to Europe on his private plane, land in Cabo Verde to refuel and let the, the dogs get out for a piss, get in the plane again and fly to Europe. So racing uh, and everything was going well. So uh, got to Imola. Wednesday, no money. So Joe Ramirez, calls him and say, Ayrton, when are you landing in Forli? You know, because they used to come then to Forli with a private plane. And then Ayrton says, I'm not coming. I mean, you're not coming. No money. You know? Tell uh, Ron, I'm not coming. Oh, I cannot do it. It's just me. Definitely, I'm not coming. So I don't know how, but probably Ron talked to Braguinha. Braguinha put the million dollars on the account. So Wednesday, uh, Thursday, he got the money on his account. And Thursday evening, he flew then from Brazil. Cap Verde, Forli. He landed in Forli at 9 o'clock in the, in the morning of Friday. Practice was from 10 to 11.30 and from 1 to 2. You remember that time? Yeah. So, so he landed in Forli. Joe was there with the helicopter. They jumped in the helicopter, flew to the football field next to Imola, you remember, next to the racetrack. They walked up, arrived at the motorhome, 10 to 10. He opens the door and Ron Dennis says, you what? So, Shut the fuck up. 10 to 10. You talk to me at 10 o'clock. That's when you had pay me to work. Still 10 minutes to go. Shut the fuck up. And Joe Ramirez was like this, you know, nervous like hell. There was, you know, there was Ayrton. He could, he could be so tough. But he was on the other side. He loved this guy. And he, if he would have survived 94, I guess that he would have taken him to uh, wherever he wanted to. Because he was the guy who, who made the big pressure at, uh, at uh, Lotus to, to have uh, Pedro. Because at the time, for the sponsorship we had, because we were late, it was like, what, September, August, late, late August. I mean, anyone could get the money. You know very well, you know, to get into Formula One, everybody could. And he got into Formula One really with the help of a lot of people, 
but with the help of Ayuta. He was an unbelievable guy. Yeah, he was. It was a shame that I didn't private more than I would like. I didn't want to disturb him and I didn't... But he was always make... asking, always the little one, right? it's the little one. Always the little one doing, always the little one doing. It was unbelievable. But you know, the very last one from Ayrton, because I don't like very much to, to have uh, you know, stories with Ayrton. But in 93, the last season, there was the, the race before last, his last race was in uh, Australia, they were in Suzuka. And in Suzuka there was 93, as I told you before, there was when, when Bridgestone decided to go Formula One. Internally, not openly, not publicly, but internally. So I, I, I was sharing a, <clears throat> a suite with uh, Yasukawa Hiroshi, big boss of, uh, of Bridgestone Racing. And I arrived there on Thursday and I thought, oh, I'm tired. This is, uh, it's, so it's better I, I, you know, I stay out as long as possible. So I get into five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm getting out of the paddock. And I meet Ayrton, and Ayrton goes, hey, Portuguese, where are you going for dinner? I said, well, pff, I don't know. I'm with a friend of mine. I don't know. I, we go somewhere. Hey, you come with us. It's Julian Jacobi and me. Uh, you come to the Italian, to the Italian restaurant in, in Suzuka Circuit Hotel, which was the only, the only restaurant you could really eat something <laughs> in Suzuka. So we go there, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. So he doesn't know who was coming with me. He didn't even ask. So eight o'clock, eight o'clock. I arrive with Hiroshi. Julian was there. So we sit. Hiroshi and me back to the door. And uh, Julian is, is here, and this is an empty seat. So we're waiting for Ayrton. Ayrton, as usual, took longer because from his villa, that where, where the little villas were, to the restaurant. He had like 10,000 autographs to, to give, you know. <laughs> so it took very long. So we're sitting and suddenly Julian says, oh, there he comes. So I stand up and Hiroshi stood up and uh, we, we turned around and there he comes. You know? So he's walking towards us. And I say, hi, Elton, are you uh, nice to, uh, can I introduce to you? This is, uh, and I even couldn't say his name. I was, and I heard goes, I know you. A finger like this. And I know you. And then he gets really upset. You fucked my championship back in Laval. You only gave me one set of qualifying tires, and you gave two sets of qualifying tires to Lake Speed, and you won the championship. I should have won the championship. And Hiroshi is like, I'm very sorry for you, sir. I'm very sorry for you. And, that, and I'm thinking, that's a good way of having uh, this nice <laughs> dinner with, uh, with uh, Ayutun and the guy. So we sit again, backwards, and uh, he says, he continues. So Hiroshi, after half an hour, had given him already a 20-foot container full of racing tires to go to Brazil for his, you know, that he had a private go-kart uh, yes. race ten, track. And they discussed, and uh, Elton says again, you only gave me one set of XR, Y, um, yellow point two, two, two. So I said, OK. So finish dinner. And Hiroshi goes back to the room, and I said, Hiroshi, I'm coming later a little bit. You know, I, I try to get to catch up with the, with the time. So I'll be, but okay, okay, okay. So he was sleeping upstairs. I was sleeping downstairs on the, on the couch. So I arrived like 12 o'clock, I don't know, midnight. So I put the TV on for the races, you know, that they show, you know, mm -hmm. the motorbike races and all that. So I'm watching this and suddenly I hear, Domingo son. I said, oh, shit, it might be the sound is too high. Uh, and I look upstairs, there is the veranda. Yeah. And Hiroshi, with a silk pyjama. He was a special Japanese. <laughs> with a silk <laughs> pyjama. And he goes, Domingos, half check. He only got 
one set of tires. It goes back to sleep. And I'm here and I said, am I dreaming? What the hell happening here? You know, nobody understood. So next day, Friday was the first day of practice. Mikuzo, Harry Mikuzo, you know, remember the guy uh, who could course. speak very well English, yeah. you know, he was Australian. He came up to me and said, Domingos, what happened last night? I said, what do you mean? You know, she called me 11 o'clock and said, jump in the car. Go to the office, check the files, Laval, <laughs> look how many sets that you got. There was it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This guy was different from all the others. You had a race track behind your house as well, didn't yeah. you? A go-kart track. But, but his father, his father, <laughs> he he was, you build, build him one. Normally, <laughs> you build him yeah. one. Is that, does that still exist or the, the, the new... Uh, it's, I think it, part of it still exists because we sold the facility, and um, but it's still there. Uh, last time, five years ago, it was yeah. there. I don't know what's going on yet, yeah. but it's still there. Yeah, it was it was great to have a dad who support uh, yeah, maximum support me. In any case, you know, with karting, racing. Carries. That's why I found it so beautiful. This video that that uh, Nico uploaded. A day or two after he yeah. won the I title, he did it home. <laughs> the pictures of, of him with KK yeah, on yeah, that yeah. car track behind the house yeah, in South of France. No? When, I, when we were in Gras, you know, with Maru and KK was there with Nico. He said, no pressure for Nico. I don't want to have him as a racing driver. <laughs> but well, that was perfect. Out. But, <laughs> you, know, but you, know, <laughs> you know, when Nico was 11, he came to me and said, Domingos, I need your help. I said, well, Nico wants to be a racing driver. I said, well, that's normal. I mean, you're a racing driver, world champ. But I have no idea who I should go to for go-kart. I said, no worries. I go to Tinini, CRG, no problem. So we fly over, actually, with the helicopter. Mm, the fish, he had always, the always, you know. So we land in uh, Lonato. So the old factory is like, oh, Keke Rosberg coming to Lonato. So with Nico, it was like April. So may I introduce you, Mr. Rosberg, Tinini, this, that, that, that. Ah, yeah, okay. So this is your son? Yes, this is my son. So, and, um, Good. You want to be a racing driver? Yeah, 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 I want to be a racing driver. How old are you? 11. You are already 12. So Nico says, no, no, I'm 11. I'll be 12 in July. You are already 12, man. I tell you, you are 12. That's the meaning. So I turn to Kick and Kick says, I like the style. Here we race. <laughs> yeah? So the first races, he, he, he drove with a kind of fake uh, uh, license. license. That was. So at the end of that year, they made a, you know, Nico was always very, uh, he had a very special relationship with Keke. You remember? Mm. Even when he was like six years old. So at the end of the year, they had a, a race, fathers and sons oh, together. I, I you remember? So much, yeah, that, 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 that. Fathers and sons in the Coca. So Nico sings, I'm going to. My dad, the world My champion dad is now. My world champion, and me, <laughs> we're going to win that pipe. Easy. Huh? So Nico drives, so he's kind of leading the race, and so he hands over to Keke, and Keke sits in the car, and after 10 minutes, he can't drive anymore. You know, big, big pain Friends. in the arms, and this and that. And he gets overtook, and then by the first, second, third. So they finish, I don't know, fifth. As they finish, Keke stands out up for the, everything is hurting, and Nico is in tears. Tears rolling down the face. Oh, Dad, you suck. <laughs> and then he goes, he really like, and he says, Dad, you suck. <laughs> How the hell did you become yeah, world champion? If yeah, I yeah. don't know what to drive, Yeah, his you idol drive. just, that just yeah. popped, you know, just <laughs> popped. Over. You My, can't yeah. drive. <laughs> you suck. <Yeah. laughs> Well, you did the same thing. 
you drove go karts once and but I'm not world champion. I mean, yeah, that's true. Was world champion. That's true. You were far <laughs> from that. But the same thing also. <laughs> Three laps and you know couldn't yeah. move the hands anymore. anymore. The the rental cards. Michael's dad's rental cart business in Cap. Mm. This is the cart we put. But you know how I met first time Michael. I was invited as a world champion to for the opening of Cap. Yeah. In 90, well. 1980. And I came there, and I was, in these days, I was with you. Conan was there. I beat him. In the race. It's just Dutch. No, it was good. It was a big, big battle between him and myself, and there was four or five. All the German, good Germans have been there. But the world champion, Kuna. Yeah. Uh, uh, His father uh, of Martin Kuna, yeah? His father? No, 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 no. no. The there no, was two Kuna. The Actually, there was two Kuna. Yeah, yeah. There was two different Kuna's. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Peter and Fred. Yeah. They are brothers. Ah, okay. And Peter was the he won the world championship, and then they have a nephew, yeah. which is Martin. He's Martin. a bit younger, and yeah. he was European champion. Yeah, he was champion. He European champion. champion with me. He was and my was, in yeah. 1980, I became junior world champion, and he has been senior champion. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, and then I came to Carpen testing. The circuit was outstanding because it was the most fashion uh, race track in Europe, and the longest as well. And it was really exciting, and uh, you know, Gerd Nowak built of up course. just yeah, yeah. opening the shop. And I came there, and there was Michael, and there, Gerd came, Schneider, you're world champion, but you see this guy, he will blow you away soon. <laughs> so, fuck, who, who the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, because this, he had a very old go kart, and very old things, you know, because Dad was not rich. He couldn't buy him anything. But he, yeah. his father was ru just running the track. Yeah, no? was yeah, just yeah, running. yeah, yeah. His just running. mother was running the, the. She sold the sausage and the fries. Yeah. The fish and chip shop. Yeah, it was the yeah, fish and exactly. chip shop. Yeah. Next to door. I mean, they had no money at all. And everything we saw away, he put it on his cart and he beat everything. Yeah, because you know? people always think it was his dad who owned the track. The it's not, which no. is not true. He, no, absolutely he no, was so. the guy who operated the rental yeah. go cart He came to us yeah. and asked, hey, you have to pay 50 yes. marks for the whole day of driving in it. And he has a stork yeah. in his <laughs> house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the, uh, the tobacco for yeah, the rolling exactly. cigarettes. Yeah. And yeah, this, I mean, it was yeah. nice guys because yeah. you went into the shop to buy something and his dad was always supporting you, trying to help you if you have any problems. But yeah. in these days, you know, uh, even in these days, motorsports was already expensive mm -hmm. and you did not expect seeing a guy coming in this, in this sports without any money. And uh, it was a really impressive uh, how Michael improved. I was 16, he 11. Mm -hmm. You know, this was the first time I met him and I never will forget. And I saw his face there, you know, it was really baby face in that time. Yeah, this round, <laughs> round yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. And he was so fast, he was unbelievable. I mean, in this days, we said, oh, he's driving without weight or whatever, yeah. but he was... You could tell, yeah. Yeah. You could no, see was, immediately this was. will be the guy for the future. And from this moment on, I always followed a bit because he was racing first for Gerd and then for Neubert. I, I was, was Neubert, with yes. Yes. Yeah. I was with Europe as well and he was factory driver there and he, I mean, he won nearly everything except the world title. Um, yeah, he came second, right? Yeah. To, to Gilardi. And yeah. He came second. 85, second to Gilardi. He came he second fourth. twice. Third. He and came Mish third. No, but he came second twice. Do we remember when he was already world champion, fifth world championship in Suzuka? Yeah. He said... He do another one. But you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. It was I in Kappen, I guess. Kappen. The he, world championship is uh, in Kappen. Uh, and he did I will race in Kappen. Oh, when he was already in Formula yeah, 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the fifth... fifth it was like Senna. He made it pretty much like Senna. Michael yeah. to Nico. Oh, the love yeah. for motorsport. I mean, Nico, I, I wasn't, no, to be quite... Love as a, a, a human being, you know, like, uh, if you like to race, how can you explain that Michael was racing in go-kart, racing in motorbikes, and then he stopped, he quit Formula 1, and then come back to Formula 1. But Nico, he was world champion, and he stopped racing. How but, much does he like for uh, racing? No, but Nico, everything in his life has always been programmed everything no, and he said i want to everything. become f1 world champion and then that's he it. achieved that finished Finish. had he won that thing 
three years and ago. So, so your, your, your opinion is that the is yes. correct? Yes. I no, think if it's, I, I don't know. According to him, is correct. According to his wife and to his belief in Buddhism, yes. Because everything is but, uh, planned. According to his uh, passion. No, you have to have passion, otherwise you cannot win a championship. You have to be. that much to, when suddenly you stop. No, no, but then. Bad, he's, he, he, he's still racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, he is a guy, I think he will never come back. Yeah. He will never come back. But you know what the problem for me is? For my side, I mean, Peter and myself, we are pretty lucky that we achieved getting a racing drive, professional racing, for such a long period. And for me, honestly, it would be very really difficult with 31 to decide to do anything else, who give me the same passion, I have, I have the same motivation to do it. And if you are 31 and sitting home with his wife can be nice for a few months, but he never did anything else. Oh, you mean it remains to be seen how he deals what, with what the What he will do life. for the yeah, next few yeah, years, yeah. you know. Yeah, but you know it's a, but it will be very hard for him to find something who give him exactly the same motivation to spend that's such much time, such much time with it, you know, and to, to, to go on in his life. Well, because even if you have enough money, you have to do something. You have to create something. You have to do something. And I think this will be hard but, for him but, to, to but find. But Bernd. It's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. But oh. Bernd, all this motivation that he had to be, he was beaten twice and he came a third time. And then finally he beat Louis. Uh, and... He, everything by him is rational. Everything. When he quit, I was at the first time surprised, but not astonished at all. So I called KK. I said, KK, you know KK and myself, we know each other since the 70s, early 70s. We are the crazy people at the Germany at the time. And I called KK and I said, KK, how did it happen? He said, I don't know. He sent an SMS to, my, to the mama and said, Mom, I quit. And then he said, by the way, can you tell Papa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so strange he, the relationship they yeah, have. Because yeah. They are quite, uh, they are not that close, actually. Ah, oh, they're they close. No, the, yeah, but they're not different because I tell you what, I, according I to me. I'm saying what uh, Matthias tell me about the, is that a bit. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's maybe, Keke is not the guy where you are really can be close from outside. But if you know, I, I spent quite a lot of time with them also home. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a really good close relationship between both of them, even if they doesn't show it outside. And uh, no, I guess, nice. you know, um, I think Keke was disappointed, I'm pretty sure, when he quit because he, he thought I mean, he was surprised. But there was still more the years of contract for good money yeah, as well. Exactly. So and I believe probably that probably, probably played, played into you know, when you know, was his disappointment. Keke, and he was with us in DTM and he continued as a big team boss. He said, you know, we have to get now in Formula 1 because I hate to fly always with my plane. I would like to fly with his plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Did but, you fly once with him? I flew out many of them. No, no, uh, KK. Ah, KK, I guess, I, I think so. You know, I had, it was so, when I lived in Monaco, you know, at morning, nine o'clock, it was telephone call. I was sleeping, you know, with no kid. He said, Bad, one hour, helicopter, uh, airport, we're going for skiing. He said, KK, nine o'clock, yeah, one hour to go. Then we're standing there, 20 degrees, skis, <laughs> ski boots. <laughs> and then you said, take off your bloody shoes in my, in my helicopter. Yeah, helicopter, everything, <laughs> everywhere. We flew everywhere. up to the mountains, we did four hours skiing, back in the helicopter down to, to Monaco. You know, when I was standing there with my skis, my ski boots, and everybody comes like this, <laughs> pass by <laughs> what the guy is doing with skis and ski boots but, at Monaco. But, uh, but we played but golf you, like that as well, you know. He said, he called me, come on, we, get, we go for golfing and we go this. I said, never heard this before. Ah, we, we go by helicopter. We flew with the second helicopter 20 minutes in country. And we played golf, flew back with the helicopter. It was a really great time. But you, you were telling that you, you, you met, you met me, uh, Michael Michel and then you kept on having contact with him. He was an extreme guy, right? Michael? 
extreme, I don't know, he just has been really focused because I think his dreams in, I think even, especially when he was in, when he grew up at Kerpen and he saw all the other people with money, you know, coming with big drugs, coming with helmets, becoming with the modern things and he had nothing. I think this gave him a motivation to say, listen, you can have whatever you want, but I will be better. And um, this is but later, first. later, you, you, you know, his, his way of practicing and and training and fitness. But you know, this is what I'm saying. You know, he had never had the material to dominate something. He had to be better than anybody else. That means he had to be more focused. He had to train. He had to concentrate more than all the others. And he keep this even in Formula One because talent-wise, in Formula One, there are many talents. The difference is how much they are focused and how how much they want to work and how much time they want to spend with the team to get the maximum out of it. And he was, after Senna, I think the guy who really was thinking all, oh, I had one goal in his life. To Dedicated perfect. to the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And he was really outstanding in this case. I think there was no other guy I met before who was so much focused for one thing. And and he had of and so close to the talent. team to everybody. I yeah. mean, he was yeah, worried. You know, and he knows you know? to have the people around. You know, he said, "Okay, I need this engineer. I need the mechanics. He, he needed everything." But he always settled everything together, and he put everything together. And this was the difference to many, many. Yeah, because many people think he was a he was a an detached. Um, at times, they called him arrogant type of guy, but he was not at all. No, you know, who to to whom he knew. All of us, we've, we've, we've known him I for a while. I think to everybody. Very jovial, very friendly, yeah. a reliable friend as well. No, always interested what is going on on your end and, you know. Yeah, but you know the funny yeah, thing yeah. with him, the funny thing with him, when he called me and he spent in South France, he had his house, sometimes he called me, hey, come on, we do some sports. This was terrible. <laughs> Coming up to his houses, four hours on the bike, then we go for running, then he had a climbing room, then we climbed up. And uh, then in his gym, I said, Michael, I'm completely exhausted. His bodyguards was already somewhere. We played, and then he started playing football. I was a day with him. For me, it was really bad. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I do sports, but I not love to do it. But he loved to do it. Every move he made, he feels no, and always competitive. Whether and it competitive was playing, I mean, but this thing with uh, he says football. We played a lot of football. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. but also, let's say, f full, not be hesitating. And I was always very worried because I thought, okay, so I was defender, let's say. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah if you <laughs> and go kick good him, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. not always, it was full power yeah. Yeah. Actually, with always. anything. Yeah. Yes, anything. Well, we were, so we while you was at, at Ferrari, you, 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 you said, the way, you know, a debriefing at Ferrari with him was like going to the university. Yeah, but of course, because we knew each other quite a, a long, long time, time. As, so and fortunately we could speak German together, and then so less official. So, but he was uh, always the man for detail, and I think very focused. So, so for him it was the way how to win. I mean, I worked with many drivers, many good drivers, but after a certain period they went home or, or to the hotel or whatever. But Michael used to call 10 o'clock and say, look, I think, what do you think, if we use this set from yesterday for the final stint on Sunday? Yeah. So, yeah, but sorry, it's stripped, eh? it, it's uh, in order. Yeah, but I still think because it has so many so laps and that, pick up the bloody and, set. and that was uh, the difference because on his day, Rubens was quicker. Mm. Yeah, if, but, but it was the attitude. Yeah, of course, fantastic driver. And he could deliver, yeah, if it was necessary with a pit stop to do just the last two laps a bit quicker, you know, for overtaking. Yeah, he delivered. So it was... Uh, was giving everything. Anyway, for you me, know. but I think the same is for him and, and, and for him. So, well, with Pedro, I didn't do anything. But, but for me, what I admired is not the driving, because I can also drive a car. Yeah, so that is but the thing how they can handle. Yeah, yeah. I was always surprised when I go in the morning yeah, to, to do shopping. So I need to wake up in my car, eh? so uh, maybe do 30, 40 kilometers. Because, and these guys, they go out yeah, early in the morning, 300. Mm -hmm. 
and then they have 1,000 of information, press this button, do this. This is what impressed me. Yeah, I think if I have a nice sports car, I do also on the motorway in Germany yeah, with a Mercedes 200 something. This is not the issue, that is just getting experience. But all these things and, and the reaction, this is for me why he is a driver or he is a driver and I'm just what I am. And this was with Michael, it was fantastic. But you know what also happened with Michael? I raced with him with karting and we never raced each other. We had one race we raced together with Le Mans in 1991. I'm with Porsche and he with Mercedes. That's the only race we ever had. And then we raced karting in, in south of France. And he said, yeah, come on, we do some karting. And I didn't know he had always very Top good. Top material, yeah. 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 Any kind. And yeah. to race with him, you know, I mean, uh, you need to have it. I called my friend, this is an English guy, lives in south of France, and he has a CHG yeah. factory material. I said, hey, listen, I'm going to drive with Michael. I said, I got special, special. <laughs> okay, I came there. And it was really competitive, you know. And um, I was in front, he behind me, or took me. One corner, he let me by. You know why? Every time, does I not can watch how he is driving. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I said, hey, Michael, we are here for let fun. <laughs> it's not let the let way. Let <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah, interesting yeah, really you to mentioned. talk And then from that moment, it came a bit more. They said, you know, we are not fighting. We are not going to go for the world champion title. Or even if it will not have But race. it is funny that you should comment in that way. Because you are probably in my top three of the most competitive people I've ever met in doing whatever it was we did. Whether it was playing ping pong in your cellar of your house <laughs> when you would lose a set. Which rarely happened. Because we were all like, hey, whatever you do. Don't be let him win. Yeah. Don't be let him win. Let him win. We ought to go. And there were there were bloody ping pong rackets flying on on here. This level, you know. And then, oh, scheiße, pong, you know. So it's funny you should yeah. say to yeah. him that you know but, we're having fun. Anyway, I learned pretty soon that you can't be the best in anything, you know. But I just get very angry when I'm not on the level. And I do not play ping pong in the way I can play. You know, no. if, if I lose against you because you're better, I don't mind. I not don't mind, but I could play. <laughs> yeah. But but if I if I think I'm on your level and maybe a little bit better, and I lose, yeah. then, then it's getting really bad. <laughs> and with Michael, this you know, but this was fun. You know, we just was a bit go karting. Everybody was watching us because it looked pretty good there in class. And he said. Hey, what are you doing? You know, we, we are here for fun. And then after he comes a bit more relaxed. And, then and what, 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 which year was that? Ah, this was 1990. I know it was later. It was 2000, around 2001. So he was two. already a couple of times world champion. But I think uh, with Michael, uh, like, we all know what he achieved in Formula One and oh, fantastic. So, but I think he was so focused and everything, like he said with ping pong. It need to be the best because we talked about this world championship round in Kerpen. And I have seen many, let's say, former karting guys who became a star and then, oh, we will do this go-kart race. But Michael not. Eh? He really intended to win there mm. because he said uh, he went testing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Yes. He, he, he lost ah, five kilos eh? so, kilo and asked the guys from uh, Tony Kart to, to, to find, you know, so... so some way to take away. I no, we think. went testing and, 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 and uh, he said to me, oh, you must come. So we went to Genk. We were testing, preparing. What is the best? How do these people? Because he was really, he was not there just to drive as much. No, 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 he no. wanted to win. Of course, yeah. So, and that is the, I think, the difference. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, what do you think? Was a nice talk? Was, was excellent. nice? You know, was... Well, if we are still friends, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And now we go for a nice lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for Thank coming. You. And motorsports is such a funny sport and such a nice sport where friendship keeps on going yeah. around. But around. I think uh, what you said that, if, for example, in the DTM in those days, there were characters. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. And I think, now I have to say, yeah, so football is not so good, but we have a good driver now in Holland. But I think what is missing is really characters also in Formula One. Absolutely. Because I'm a big fan of Nico because of the way we work together, even when he was in Williams. So I like the guy, so technically. So, but you are right, I understand what you're saying. No, no. So for me, I hate tattoo, but note that. 
So, but the most of them, they don't speak anymore. If you speak with some Formula One driver, even with uh, Vettel, off the record, yeah, what they tell about the tire and all these things. But officially, it's all so programmed now. Yes. We're missing that. Yeah. Plastic. Yeah, plastic. That's it. And when we, when we were in DTM, you know, if things were not going well, we were shouting. And, Absolutely. And that is what we are missing. Yeah. Kimi, maybe, emotions. Kimi yeah. is maybe the, the only one is different, but still, so him that now is quite, uh, nothing happened with the uh, no news. Well, I don't know, I haven't seen a, a, an F1 driver's briefing in a long time, but I know the driver's briefings in DTM and ITC, uh, which was all piss takers the whole time. Nobody was listening to Roland Ponzerat, everybody came late. Palestra. And, you know, yeah. You know, I remember him with Nanini, uh, I don't know if the work could still an orchid, but <laughs> Nanini, I was Eddie Chiba, Nanini and myself, and Pierre Carlo Cinzani was my teammate. And Nanini was telling something in, um, in English. His English wasn't that good. No, you know? it was and, like and slicks he in was the talking rain. about girls. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about girls, and he always said he to Chiba and Voig was the thing. And then um, Chiba took Nanini's hand, put on his stake, and said, Listen. This is a he, and not a she. <laughs> <laughs> this was the moment I also know what's different between a he and a she. <laughs> she <laughs> this is a he. <laughs> Excellent. This was the uh, fun. Okay. I was doing the, the driver's screaming. Thank that, you very much.